Connor, thanks for just kind of hanging out and watching another video. I'm obviously down here in the dungeon here at the Edgy Headquarters. Yes, plenty bright. I'm talking to you. You can hear me. I don't slur my speech. It doesn't look like a Taliban video, and uh, always glad to be with you. Now, um, and just some Monday random thoughts going into the week. Sorry, Mike. Don't want to steal your thunder there. Don't want to steal that. That's a Mike from the Brook legendary creation about random thoughts. But, uh, uh, again, July 8th, so we're coming off a uh, long 4th of July weekend. I hope you had a great weekend. And it's back to work, kids. We're uh, under... Uh, 60 days and counting actually we're down to in the 50s mid 50s before kickoff so again a busy time of the year and things are going to start ramping up here as well um seeing some players you're going to see more new features coming your way over the next week or so including this random one-off video i'm going to have on mondays and you're going to see more video as well so stay tuned uh looking forward to uh presenting a lot more information starting this week all right, um, busy week ahead. Wanted to give you a heads up on that. Tomorrow, Tuesday the 9th, I will be out at Bain West for the annual MSL CSL 7 on 7, which really isn't just MSL and CSL. It's it's kind of Chicagoland, Bain West, and uh, Jason Craven has really grown that event. Again, it's 24 teams, I believe, and, and just a really nice night, handful of hours, teams just getting together, and it's good to go watch some teams in person. So I will be there. A um, couple other events during the week I'm trying to add to the schedule and get out and see. Looking at West Aurora, 7-on-7 seven seven Friday morning. Then Friday afternoon I'm hitting the road. I'm heading down to Carbondale, going to SIU for Saturdays, 7-on-7. Uh, seven seven, again, 24 teams, uh, as well as the lineman, offensive lineman, defensive lineman camp. So it's a big, big event down in Carbondale on Saturday, going home to Salukiville. Looking forward to it. So, again, um, I will bring you, obviously, a lot of coverage from there. Um, the thing that I wanted to discuss on thoughts here, and, and I kind of joked about a month or so ago about how all of a sudden it seemed like we've had a rash of transfers, and I kind of kind of jokingly, tongue-in-cheek, kidded and said, you know, Maybe I should start a transfer portal, <laughs> just like the NCAA has their transfer portal now. We should start a uh, IHSA high school football transfer portal um, with the amount of transfers that have gone down. And, and I'll tell you what, it's still a pretty elite level kids that are going to be making college or in the college. They're going to be making high school changes over the next few weeks. So we are far from done. Transfer season is well and alive here in July. So. And there's already been a just a blinding amount of transfers that have gone down the last month or two. Uh, and it's funny because there are some teams I've done preseason team previews on that I can almost kind of tear them apart and redo them just from the fact that uh, a lot of the information I get from the coaches I get usually early to mid-May, late May at the absolute latest. Um, so again, it's a good time to get the coaches feedback without kind of interfering with finals. But at this point, I should almost wait till early June just to make sure, um, that these guys have some idea of what's coming back. And in a lot of cases, there have been some fundamental changes. I mean, some major changes in a handful of schools in particular. And yet what really caught my attention was this weekend, I saw a handful of kids, that are making changes. I know one kid downstate, Ian Benner, who was a quarterback from Aurora Foresight, transferring, going to uh, Glenwood, uh, heading over to Chatham to go to Glenwood High School. And again, that just, again, just told me, hey, this is a statewide thing going down. And uh, again, it continues to grow and continues to, uh, seems to be more and more popular. So again, I don't know if that's a good thing, a bad thing, and a different thing. I know the high school coaches are not thrilled about it, and if you want to find out, you can talk to them off the record, and they will be glad to share you their opinion. Now, on the record, yeah, you're not going to get very much from them on the record whatsoever, um, understandably, but uh, I, I don't know what can be done, quite honestly. You look from the IHSA standpoint, and I love people that will go, well, you... The IHSA should get more involved, and, and they should be investigating schools. Well, look, let's be let's just face it, okay? The IHSA is a very small organization. Um, they are not the NCAA. They do not have a team. 
of private investigators that go out and do their work. Um, they rely on school self-monitoring and self-reporting, and that's that's the bottom line. And really, school's only real recourse in, in any type of transfer is that if they're asked to sign off, there is a checkbox on that list that uh, you can check that says basically you have some questions regarding the transfer, and then the IHSA will certainly look into it. But until then, most schools will just sign off on the transfers. And again, you understand that. Most coaches thinking, I don't want a kid here that doesn't want to be here to begin with. But uh, I know the coaches aren't real thrilled these days. It's certainly the ones that are losing kids are not thrilled these days. And it seems like the coaches that are getting kids in via the transfer portal, uh, they don't want to talk a lot about it either for obvious reasons. So. Again, um, it's something the last couple of years have picked up. This year, it's just been crazy how many kids have transferred. And, you know, let's face it. We are in an era that people are going to transfer for athletic reasons. And, oh, no, shocked. <laughs> Don't be shocked. This has been going on for a while, but I think the advent of travel sports, softball, baseball, basketball, and, again, I hear from high school football coaches all the time, well, we're trying to avoid football becoming AAU basketball. Hey, hate to tell you, coaches, you're kind of AAU basketball league now. So, um, and, and this is just another prime example of, of taking that next step. Now, let's face it. Um, I've heard coaches blame seven-on-seven seven organizations. I've heard coaches blame uh, position coaches, trainers, you know, of getting too involved and forcing talking kids into transferring. And I think I think there's a lot of different hands in this. But bottom line is it's you, you can't you can't tell people they can't move their kid and do what they want to do. It that's just there's just, like it or not, parents are gonna do what they feel is best for their kid. Now whether you agree with that or disagree with that, that's totally fine. But bottom line is you you have no say in what kids do. It's up to the parents what they're going to do with their kids and if that means they're going to move their kid to a district and rent an apartment for a year and live there then so be it there's not a whole heck of a lot that i can see being done about it i mean as we mentioned i just say you know i what can you do i mean i guess maybe and again this is just off the top of my head but if you transfer i don't care if it's public to public private to private public to private private to public i don't know a blanket rule if you transfer you're ineligible for a year <laughs> I don't see that one lasting very long and I see it being challenged multiple times the moment it's passed so I don't see that being a solution um, it's very tough in this day and age it's, it's tough to tell parents what they can and can't do with their kids and again it's a different dimension now and a different family dynamic than we had 15 20 30 years ago uh, more people get divorced and stay married these days. So you have that. You have, you know, one year, a kid might live with the mom. The next year, he lives with the dad. The year after that, maybe one of the parents moves into a different district, and they go. But let's not fool ourselves. And a large majority of these cases, and the reason we hear about it as fans and media, is because it's sports-related. So, again, um, it's something that has really run rampant this summer. I'm actually shocked that the quote-unquote regular media hasn't picked up on this more, but we can get into that at a later time. But something definitely worth discussing, and, and, and even discussing, it gets weird because, you know, I'd love to talk about some of this stuff on my message board and get into it, but what happens is we'll start having a good discussion, and then one or two people start naming kids specifically or coaches and programs specifically, and that's it. It's over. Uh, I'm already editing out innu innuendo and, and back talk about certain programs and with transfers and what have you. So, uh, again, it's even difficult on, on the message boards to talk about because, again, I'm just not going to tolerate it. It's, if you haven't learned that by now on the message board, you better learn it really fast. I basically have a zero, pol zero tolerance policy anymore. I'm, d I'm just not going to put up with it because it goes nowhere. All it does is cause issues that I hear that I get feedback from, and if I'm gonna be held responsible for something, I'm just gonna cut it out while I can. So like it or not, that's how it's, that's how things are gonna be handled when it comes to this. So again, very complicated issue that 
we can't even really talk about the way we want to talk about. But I felt it was important to throw things out there, to put it out there in the atmosphere and, and let you guys at least get some perspective and some of my thoughts. I mean, am I thrilled with it? No. I mean, I would love to see kids stay at their schools. The one the one thing I've, I've always struggled with in understanding, and I guess I get it more now than I have before, but the senior year transfer, I mean... I just don't understand it, especially the way the recruiting process has gotten earlier and earlier. I mean, we're in July. If you're a senior and you don't have an a, a FBS or an FCS offer at this point, odds are you're not going to get one. So I don't care what school you play at. I don't care what school you transfer to. You could have a terrific season. Bottom line is that most of those schools, they're already filled. Or they have a recruiting list that's that runs position wise probably four or five deep at every position so it's again it's it's not to dissuade kids or or you know trying to paint a, a bleak picture but that's just the reality of the recruiting process so all right I'll leave that thought with you uh thanks for watching uh every monday